It's not just another day in your life. Things are changing for the better. At Comcast, we see those changes and we're thinking about how we use technology today to live, work, learn, and play. And we're building for the future now, so we're better prepared for the wants and needs of tomorrow. That's why Comcast is rolling out multi-gig internet speeds to more than 50 million homes and businesses before the end of 2025, making our already industry-leading network even faster, smarter, greener, and more reliable. Over the decades, Comcast has been your partner, working hard to serve your community, and will continue to be your partner. We're expanding our gigabits so you can enjoy the tiny bits that matter most. It's Not Your Fault is a podcast for parents, caregivers, and young people navigating the world and its challenges. Here's your host, Brandon Jones. Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to another installment of It Is Not Your Fault, a teen mental health podcast dedicated for parents and caregivers to figure out better solutions, better strategies, and clear purpose when it comes to working with young people. And it's a podcast for young people. So they have some things they can chew on as well as they navigate the society that we live in. I am your host, Brandon Jones. And on today's episode, we are talking about promoting positive body image and a healthy relationship with one's own self. <clears throat> this topic came from a couple of things. It's weird how the universe works and brings these topics alive. One, it was a listener question. They submitted it uh, via email and said, hey, I have a young young male, actually, a young teenage boy, I believe he was 14 years old, who's been having some challenges around accepting his body. Um, and they were like, Brandon, do you have any tips or suggestions on what I could do to talk to this young man about his body? And I'll talk a little bit about more what they said and the feedback that I gave them, the tips that I gave them in today's episode. Um, and also, <laughs> uh, well, another thing that happened was I was talking to one of my friends, uh, one of my friends, she's been living outside of the United States now for about six months at the beginning. She left at the beginning of the year here and, um, she has lost a significant amount of weight. And she said, I'm not exercising. I'm eating different types of foods. She's doing a lot of dancing. She's a, she's a, she likes to dance. So she's dancing and, you know, she's in South America, you know, she's doing all the, all the nice fancy dances down there in those South American countries. Uh, but she's eating cleaner. The food is different. She said the food tastes different. She hasn't tasted meat that tastes the way the meat tastes because it's, it's more fresh. You know, it's not processed as much as it is here in the United States. And she noticed that her weight has significantly dropped. Um, so that was something that made me think. And she's a young person, you know, she's in her uh, mid 20s and she's living her life after college and just touring the world and trying to, you know, have as many experiences as she can. And she's noticing how her body's just different, being in different space and different environments. And it had me reflecting on myself and my own health journey and how I need to get back on it because during the pandemic, I slid, you know, once they put the mask, uh, recommend, not recommendation, the requirement, excuse me. In the gyms, I was like, oh, no, Brennan is not going to be able to breathe in them gyms. <laughs> not like with that. And my regiment got way off and I have to get back on it myself. So um, and then even myself as a young man, I remember my own what people might even consider to be body dysmorphia. Now, I was never clinically diagnosed with that. One of my friend, one of my psychology friends um, that I had earlier when we were going through school, she would always say I had it because I would always talk about my body and working out. And I was working out a lot and things like that. But I have my own image issues around body, and I think that it's definitely prevalent with the conversation that we had a few episodes back talking about social media and how that's contributing to the mental and emotional well-being of our children as they look at people who are having all different types of sur cosmetic surgeries done to, quote unquote, have these perfect curvaceous bodies. People are getting veneers, you know, their teeth are being done. People are doing their lips and cheeks and their nose jobs. They're getting their chest done. They're getting the BBLs, the Brazilian butt lifts. And these are young people. These are young people getting these surgeries. 
Um, you know, people are even microblading their eyebrows. I mean, there's all types of cosmetic things happening for young people. A lot of those things are with women, but you'll start to see that more males will be having surgery or having those surgeries as well. Um, I know a, a very popular, um, I think he's a rapper, but uh, this guy named, um, what's his name? Cabo, something, Bandman, Bandman Cabo is his name. Uh, and he had a plastic surgery done that gave him permanent abs. And he looks like an action figure. It, it, it looks flawless. <laughs> if I had the money to get the perfect abs, I might think about doing it myself too. But it was this, it was it was eye opening because I'd never seen a male have plastic surgery to put in perfect abs. I've heard about bodybuilders and things like that who go and get their calves done, uh, or maybe even have some work done on like their biceps, but never their abs. And I was like, wow, we have we've advanced so much. And technology and science that we we literally are putting people together like Barbies. I mean, we're literally building bodies, um, and and that's that does impact the young person's mind. Remember, this is a podcast for adolescents. These are young people who are going through the various stages of development, and through those stages of development comes image. It's it's how I look. Your image can lead to clout. Your clout can lead to your, lead to your relationships. Your relationships can lead to your access, where you can go, what you can't go, where you can't go. Uh, and that ultimately may lead to finances and money. And this is something that we have to keep in mind in this world where we have things like OnlyFans and young people are able to make money off their bodies, uh, even if they're not revealing much. There's this the desire to see, to engage, and to um, even interact with people's bodies. This is playing a role in young people's minds. Uh, it's scary. It's scary to me. Uh, as a father, I have a 10-year-old daughter. I've, I've mentioned plenty of times in this podcast, she doesn't have TikTok, but she knows all the TikTok dances. She sees a lot of these people. Even when I try to protect her from not seeing these people, they'll still pop up here and there, and she knows who these people are. And what does that do for her image? She's a young African-American girl. Um, we know that African-American girls have things with their hair, their skin complexion, the size of their lips, their nose, uh, all different types of things when it comes to image. So I'm very conscious of that. Her mother's very conscious of that as well. And we do the best to make sure that she loves herself no matter what she looks like or how she looks. But it doesn't just stop there. There's other things that we have to encourage and enforce to make sure that our children are developing the way that we want them to develop and not being harmed by just the things that they see, whether that's in social media world or in real life. So with that, let's talk a little bit about some of the tips that we can engage in as parents and caregivers and as young people, because some of these things you can do yourself to make sure that you're having the best possible outcome when it comes to developing your mind around how you look and what you look like. So I mentioned the email came in from the listener asking about their teenage son. What can they do? Uh, this is a young man who is actually a little bigger than his age. Uh, he was about 14 years old, but the boy was like 6'5 and about 300 pounds. Big old man. I mean, he's a man child is what we used to call guys like that. Uh, back when I played in high school sports, it's like this big old human and he's not done growing. He probably wears about a size 17, 18 size shoe. And that's a big guy. That guy is not done growing. Right? He, he's probably going to hit another growth spurt here before it's over. And um, but subconsciously. For this young man, he was struggling with it being so much bigger than everybody. And apparently from what what the uh, mother was saying was her son has gets his height from his dad's side. Dad has talked to him about certain things, but it hasn't really clicked. Um for the son just yet because he's still having these like moments of self-doubt he wants to he shrink himself he's stated these types of things before but he's just a big man he's just a big young kid who who's not a man but he can be mistaken as a man which also concerns the mother and the father in this case that their son can find himself in harm's way due to him being such a large um such a large young boy but he still has the mindset of a teenager uh, which is a very realistic concern for many parents so what can we do? The first thing we can do, and what I share with this with this mother, I'm hopefully she shared it with the father as well, is we have to encourage self acceptance. Self acceptance. That young man has to accept who he is. He has to accept that he's larger than his pe most of his peers. He has to accept that the body that he the creator has blessed him with, and he has to figure out 
you know, how to live in that in that body without shame. And that comes with accept self-acceptance first, because shame is a very dangerous emotion. And that may be another podcast that we'll dive into later. But shame prevents us from really living our true, being our true selves and, and living our, our true lives, because we don't want other people to judge us based on who we are, how we look. But that's selfless. So we have to encourage self-acceptance. It is what it is. It is who you are. Love yourself and be and think of it as a blessing because most people can't have such a height or such a weight that gives you advantages in many different areas of life. And this should not be a burden for you as a bigger young person. The next thing I encourage the mother in this case was to make sure that the media literacy and critical thinking of her son was something that they're paying attention to. And what I mean by that is what is he taking in that is giving him a counter message on his size? Is he looking at content of other bigger young people or other bigger people? Uh, one, of the, one, of the, um, one of the people I, I encouraged her son to look at was a guy named um, uh, Aaron Donald. He is a defensive tackle for the Los Angeles Rams. And he, his physique is just, it's, it's, it, it, I mean, he, he talk about man child. He's been this big for like a long time. Uh, he's, and actually this kid is bigger than, uh, <laughs> bigger than Aaron Donald, but the physique is what I was trying to get her to share, to share his Instagram and how he takes care of his body and how he's been doing that since he was in high school. He, I mean, on his Instagram, you can look and see how he used to work out and eat um, and, and, and pretty much prepare himself to play football. Now, I don't know if this young man's interested in football or not, and that's not the point. The point is encouraging him to see other people who take care of that kind of, uh, man child, like physique very early on and not have shame around it, but make sure you're taking the best possible care of your body. Um, and then the critical thinking around that too, just because you are bigger than everybody doesn't mean you need to play football. doesn't mean that you're a tough guy. doesn't mean any of that stuff. But what it does mean is that you just, you, you occupy a little bit more space and capacity than most people your age. And that's okay. And that's okay. The next thing, and this kind of goes into why I sent the video clips. The third thing is promoting healthy habits. So we didn't get in, she didn't share too much about, you know, his eating habits or things like that. But I talked about things like uh, hygiene, being a bigger person um, for this young man, his hygiene has to be different, right? <laughs> you know, he has to have some different hormonal things going on because this is his size. So making sure he's grooming himself, making sure he has the proper things that he needs for his own uh, grooming capabilities, uh, making sure that he is exercising, he is taking care of that body of his, making sure that he has clothing that fits. Uh, making sure his shoes are fitting, you know, as a as a 14 year old that large of a young person, th those feet grow. <laughs> you want to make sure that you have proper shoes and things. So you're nurturing that body to the best of your ability. Make sure he doesn't just take showers, but he also takes baths and he soaks his body and his skin is taken care of. Like these are the things that we don't think about when we talk about uh, nurturing healthy habits, but these things are important for the growing body. Uh, so, same thing with relaxation, make sure he's getting adequate sleep, making sure that he's uh, trying to manage his stress to the best of his ability because he has to make sure that that big body is growing in a healthy way. The next thing I uh, offered up and I suggested was to have open communication. Uh, be there to listen. He's already shared some insights on how he feels about being a larger person. Make sure that you're able to at least listen, actively listen to what's being shared. If you don't have any advice, that's fine. But make sure that you can at least listen to what is being shared by this young man. Um, and and then oh, and then being able to ask him questions. How are you feeling about this? You know, how are you feeling about that? Lena, you know, what do we need to do? Do we need to go to the doctor? Make sure he's got regular checkups. All those types of things are going to be good uh, as long as the communication is there. He feels comfortable enough to share where he's at with his size and with his body. And then the last thing I shared, and I try to always give people multiple different strategies. I never say these are solutions. They're more tips. They're more strategies because some things are going to work for people and other things are going to work for other people. So I try to give at least, you know, four to six things. So my fifth thing was role modeling and support. She mentioned that the dad was a uh, was a larger, young, uh, larger, larger man now, but he was a larger young person when he was younger. Um, and I said, well, how is dad having conversations with him? How is dad role modeling his size now as an adult? Um, and his dad showing old pictures of himself or talking about things that have happened in his life when he was younger. Um, and how is he showing that support that, yes, you are a big kid and it's going to be okay. And you will continue to develop as a man at some point. 
And his dad being able to show that. And if dad kind of carries this height in his family lineage, are there other people that are around that can also have those conversations with him about being a larger young person? Um, but it's all about role modeling and encouragement at the end of the day. We have to role model and encourage healthy behaviors for our young people, no matter what their body image is like. And I, and I use this, and this is not the common example, right? You're talking about a, a larger size male. Typically, when we talk about body image, we do talk about young ladies, but it does hit the male population as well. But these tips are good across the board. No matter if you have a young person who's in transition, no matter if you have a young person who um, is, has a larger size, whether it's weight or height, no matter if you have a young person who's just, you know, having some anxiety around what their body looks like. Maybe they're a little bit underdeveloped in one area, overdeveloped in another. Maybe they have a speech impediment. There's a lot of different things that can be going on, but utilize these tips to support the young people in um, in your life so they have a better opportunity to just live and not have any guilt or shame by what God has blessed them with in their lives. So with that, I'm going to pause here on the podcast and remind you all there's three places you can connect with me at first you connect with me on my personal website www.jegna.org that's www.jegna.org or you can check me out at shaletta makes me laugh.com that's shaletta makes me laugh.com and as always you can connect with us on the facebook page it is not your fault podcast go ahead connect there we're going to share some resources i'm going to drop an article there also with these tips. So if you are following along on the podcast, you can also catch the article there on um, It Is Not Your Fault, the podcast on Facebook. So with that, we're going to let you go. We'll holler at you again next week. Make sure you share the podcast with somebody you care about and take the best possible care of yourself. Peace. To check out previous episodes of It's Not Your Fault or to learn more about Brandon Jones, log on to SheLetterMakesMeLaugh.com.